Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to my channel. So cottage seasoning and cottaging is a tried and true Canadian tradition, especially where I'm from uh, in central Ontario. Southern Ontario is really where I'm from, but that's neither here nor there. Um, because we have places like the Muskokas and the Kawartha Lakes, and it seems like everybody knows somebody who has a cottage. And lately, um, I haven't been doing any filming on the weekends and you guys will notice like my uploading is kind of sporadic, particularly around the weekend time, because I feel like every single weekend since the weather has been nice, I have been at somebody's cottage or at Tom's trailer or something of that effect. And I have just been loving it, just been enjoying the hot weather, soaking it all in, um, especially because the job that I have now, I mean, if you guys remember back way back when in December I was working as a server, so I didn't get a lot of weekends off. But for right now, until I switch into shift work, I do get my weekends off. So we have been definitely making use of them. And on, I think it was Friday night, we were sitting in the canoe and we were fishing and just hanging out and looking at a really pretty sunset. And I thought, and the way that it reflected off of the water, and I thought that's, that's just, it's beautiful. It's one of the things that you love to do to go and just get away from everything. No phones, no nothing, just be one with nature. Um, and then we were fishing. You guys will be very happy or maybe not happy to know um, because I don't remember if I said this, but when I went to Mexico, we did like feed the fish on the beach and whatnot. And one actually like, oh, I'm gonna knock my camera, we're all good. One may or may not have bit my niece. Um, <laughs> It did, but I am like kind of really afraid of fish. I don't really know why. I just don't like them swimming in and around me. It just kind of freaks me out. Um, and Tom absolutely loves fishing. So he dragged me out on the boat a couple weeks ago, um, to try fishing. And genuinely, like the first night, I was just like casting as horribly as I could because I just didn't want to catch a fish because I knew if I caught a fish, he would make me hold the fish. And uh, so the first night I didn't catch anything. And the second night, even though I was still trying my technique of like being really bad at fishing, I ended up catching a fish and I did hold the fish and it's not as scary. So my fears like subsided a little bit, but I'm still kind of freaked out about swimming with them. Anyway, so in catching these bass, we catch, we fish for largemouth bass. I'm looking at the colors and they're just absolutely stunning. And I was sitting there and, you know, in those moments of quiet, when you're just one with nature is kind of when your best ideas come to you. And I kind of thought, how much fun would it be for me? Because I do seem to go up there every week and we're always taking pictures, like I said, of sunsets, of the fish, the fishing lures that Tom has are absolutely gorgeous colors. I thought, how fun would that be to turn into a makeup series? So here we are today. This is going to be the first of what I hope is a few, at least like once a week installations of my Canadian summer 2018 cottage series, where I will put up a picture at the beginning of every video and tell you guys where I'm getting my inspiration from. And we will try and create an eye look or a makeup look or something that has to do with that, that has to do with the inspiration I got that from. If this series works out and is successful, I am thinking about pushing it kind of into a winter series because we do go in the winter as well. We do like four wheeling and sledding and whatnot all up in the winter. And there's some beautiful colors there as well. More icy tones, obviously a little darker, but you get my idea. So for today, what I thought I would do is, um, kind of a look inspired by those fish that I've been catching. Like I said, it's largemouth bass. So I'm going to put up a picture of me with, um, a largemouth bass that I caught and if you guys looked at the picture at all you'll see like the beautiful like dark greens running down the back and it kind of fades into like lighter greens and then their their bellies and like their mouths and stuff are almost like a like translucent iridescent it's not really iridescent but kind of white so I thought it would be really cool to play on that and do kind of an eye look um with some dark greens up top and then fade down into some lighter greens into that iridescent kind of a white color. And for whatever reason, when I was like picturing this look in my head, we're going to do some like peachy tones too, not in the eyes, but definitely in a lip, we're going to go for like an orangey peachy tone and also in a blush. And then the only thing I forgot to grab was actually highlighter. So I'm going to grab that. But I don't know why I think that like whenever I do green, it goes with peach. I think that's from so many years of doing it at like St. Patrick's Day um, just to go along with the Irish flag. So we are going to do that today. 
Alrighty, so to get started, we are going to first prime the lids. Today I'm going to use my Soft Okra MAC Paint Pot. This one is a little bit more yellow tone, and I normally do use Painterly, but if I'm completely honest, just because of some of the greens that we're going to be using, I just think that this will hold up a little bit better underneath. And also, um, I'm kind of trying to use this one up or Painterly up or one or both up, and then not repurchase the other one because I don't think that I need both in my collection. Um, I do use both from time to time, but I could definitely get away with only one or the other. Just something that I've noticed. Um, so for me, I'm just kind of going to try and sneak away from it. So I've pulled out, I'm just going to kind of show you guys, it's all just behind me, a ton of different like greens and whites and uh, a few palettes here and there. I've even got some pigments. I don't know that we're going to get into these because you guys know how much trouble these cause me. But I have got a ton of stuff that we can work with today. So we're just going to start playing and kind of just see how it goes. So I think for a starter, just to lay down a bit of a base color to build off of. Um, hmm. Two seconds, I'm going to get something. So we are going to lay down a base color just using this MAC shadow. I'm trying to also use a lot of my single shadows because I sort of realize I only really ever play with palettes because they're easy to travel with. So while I'm at home and while I'm sitting literally right next to my drawers, I might as well be using them. So we're going to kind of lay down a layer of this MAC matte shadow. This is in blanc type, blank type. I'm not 100% sure. I'm just going to lay it down sort of to set that um, soft ochre primer and to give the other shadows a little something, something to cling to. Um, it's not going to take away from the look at all. It's not really part of the look. It's just sort of like a prep for the look. If you catch me looking up there, I'm just looking. I've got a big light. Um, excuse me. It's a mirror that has actually a ring light in it. So just if you see me kind of glancing up, that is what I'm looking for. So I think where I'm going to start, because I do want this to be a lot of greens and stuff like that is I'm going to start with this you know what I have another green that I would prefer to use for right now just to start because it's not as bright we're going to use this green it's in guacamole they are unless I say otherwise you know what I'm not going to say otherwise every shadow I'm using today is a MAC shadow so this one's in guacamole it's not quite the bass color I'm going for but I just kind of want it to lay down a base of that green in my crease just so that the other ones have something to build off of but yet so that I don't get too high or too dark in my crease because I do that quite a bit and I don't want even though the dark green is like the most prominent color on a bass I don't want it to wash out everything else I'm doing like the gradient of color that we're doing Also, if my hair looks kind of disastrous, it's because it's like half still wet. I just jumped in the shower super quick after work um, and then rushed to dry it so that I could get this filmed for you guys. Because I think Tom and I are watching a movie tonight when he gets home. Because I don't have a test tomorrow. Just in case you were curious. So next I am going to go in with that color I was originally going to go into. This is Lucky Green. It's a super bright green. I love this color see if I can pick some of that up at all just like that and we're gonna put that all in the crease and this color probably will also transition further down my eye as well but for right now we're just gonna build it up in the crease and I'll add more as I see fit because it's easy to add more it's really difficult to take away I'm hoping that this translates to camera because for whatever reason, when I do film these, it always looks great in my viewfinder. It looks great when I'm editing it and then it gets on YouTube and it all goes to like hell in a handbasket and the footage gets super grainy and stuff like that. Sometimes I've been a little luckier and when the lighting's good like it is right now, um, it is a little bit more visible of what's going on. So I'm hoping that that's what happens today, but we'll see. So just a little itty bit of a darker green, nothing crazy. I'm going to go into, this is my MAC Rock and Rebel palette. And I'm going to take the color, I think it literally is Rock and Rebel. Yes, it is. It's this green color right here. I'm going to take some of that and just start to layer up in the crease. Not all the way, not quite all the way into the center as I did with the lighter green. 
And I do have a darker green that we're going to go into as well. And I'm going to just bring this one down, start bringing it down over my lid a little bit as well, just like that. Now, if you like this look and you're not into greens, the thing that I like about makeup is that the way that I'm doing this, honestly, is the same way that I do my makeup 90% of the time with like every different color combination that I have is just um, sort of starting with a base color in the crease just to start darkening it and bring it a little higher and adding colors that are gradually darker and darker and darker to each other and moving further and further and further away from the inner corner of my eye with those dark colors. And I find that it always builds to a really nice gradient if you blend it out and all that whatnot properly. Uh, it can look really, really pretty. So just try it. Just practice. Just spend some time playing. That's the only way you ever really get good at it and learn kind of what you like and what you don't like. Sorry, this color is in humid. This is sort of the color that I pictured as that super, super dark green that runs along its back. So I am going to definitely have that really, really prominent in the outer corner. Just like that. We're going to do a little blending. I don't want to blend too, too much because I do like the way that it's starting to look. But you got to blend a little bit, right, just to soften some of the harsh edges. Just like that. So I don't know if there's even a point to me doing this, but we're going to try and add in some of this. This is an extra dimension eyeshadow. This one's in Silver Sun. And it's kind of like a greeny sort of shiny kind of color. So I'm going to pick up a bit of that just with my finger and sort of just tap it on the lid. Not a ton because I do want the lid to actually be more of that white iridescent color. But just a bit. I am going to go back in with a little bit more of that lucky green because I do want some of that to stand out a little bit more. Just right there. I'm trying to get more of a gradient going of this color. And then we'll soften it or we'll darken it back up a bit with that humid. Also, another thing with makeup and being good at makeup is knowing when to stop. Because I have definitely done looks on my channel and on my own time where I just keep adding and adding and adding and adding because I think it'll get a little better, a little better, a little better. And then you hit a point where you just go way too far and you find yourself sitting there thinking, heck, I wish I had stopped two steps ago, three steps ago. It looked way better then. So for the white, that's not even white. So I'm just debating between these two. So one is an extra dimension shadow in Frostwink. This came out in the holiday collection. And the other one is in Dust Off. And this came out with the Mirage Noir collection. Let's just see here. So this is the two. Okay, I think we're actually going to use a little bit of both. I'm going to use this kind of more. Oh, you know what? No, I don't want the white taking away from all of it. So we are just going to use this one. And I'm going to just go in. I just got a new little shadow brush from Luxie in a something box I don't remember so we're gonna try and take a little bit of that just pat it on like I said I just kind of want like a little bit of a white iridescence because that's kind of the color that bass have running across their belly and I don't want it to take too too much away from all the green that I've already done And I am really glad that I picked this one and not the other one because I think that the other one would have just been too white. And that just kind of gives it a little sheen and brings in more of the colors from that fish. Just like that. So we are going to kind of call that done, I think, as far as like the shading goes because that is more or less. I kind of wish that green was a little darker. Let me see what I can do here and hopefully I won't regret doing this. I'm going to try and sweep a little bit more of that humid in my crease because I don't feel like I've got enough representation of the dark color of the bass. That's a little bit better. There we go. 
There we go. When in doubt, get your fingers out. There we go. That makes me feel much better and I feel like I haven't screwed it up completely yet. Blend this one out a little bit because I did kind of uh, get it a little harsh, especially because I used my finger. Make sure that I've got enough. I'm sorry also that I keep talking that way. It's just because that's where everything is. I'm not filming at my desk anymore. The desk is down behind me. I'm literally using like a laundry mat rack as a makeshift like holder. So I'm doing what I can, guys. That's all I got to say. So to kind of complete the eye look, we are going to use a little bit of black liner. I am going to smoke out my lower lash line also with some green liner in a minute. Uh, this is just my MAC Rapid Black Liner. I'm just seeing if it even works. So I'm going to do the liner off camera and then I will come back and we'll keep going. Alrighty, so I'm all back from putting eyeliner on. This is where we are right now. Uh, and just as an FYI, that Rapid Black did not work. It is completely dried out. So that's good. At least now I know and I can get rid of it for back to MAC. Um, so we're just kind of going to finish up the eye look. I'm going to try and use just this eyeliner to smoke out underneath my eye. This is in Forever Green. And it is a MAC liner. This is not quite as dark as I wanted it to be, so I am going to take some of that humid and really, maybe not, if I can find it. And really, really, really lightly with a pencil brush, kind of touch the tip to that and then smoke that out on the lower lash line. I screwed up a little bit there. Here, I'm just gonna try and round it out and fix it. Oh, I screwed up a lot bit. Uh, that's interesting. Here, let's try and fix that. Yeah, whatever. Nothing concealer can't fix later. Don't even care. So that's going to be the eye pretty much done. Just to finish it off, let's grab some mascara. So I have, again, I just got this in some kind of a beauty box. This is the, the Smashbox Super Fan Lashes Mascara, Fanned Out Mascara. I actually do have like a MAC green mascara, but I do want this look to be vaguely replicatable. So that's why I'm staying away from that. And I'm just going to go with the black because I feel like everybody has black mascara and it can be really, really difficult to find a green mascara. Also, I didn't even show you, but in honor of this series, every shirt I'm going to wear is either going to be like Canada or Canada themed. Sorry, I'm moving my camera or like plaid or something of that effect just to go along with like my cottage sort of a theme. So keep an eye out for that. Hopefully we'll see how many times I can go through before I start repeating shirts. Um... <laughs> So the next thing we're going to do is add a little bit of blush. So for that, I'm going to be using this blush. This is MAC Peachy Keen. It is a sheer tone shimmer blush. It's not quite as orange as I was going for, and it looks really pink on camera, but it does have a little bit more of a peach feel to it when you're actually in person. Just put some of that on. Brutten up those cheeks. There we go. For a highlight today, I have decided I'm going to stick with that kind of like uh, shimmery white kind of theme. And we're going to use this Too Faced uh, Blinded by the Light Love Light highlighter. So I'm just going to grab my big Natasha Denona brush. This is my favorite highlighting brush. Like it was expensive, but it was kind of worth it. Like I do use it genuinely all of the time, like all of the time. So just add some of that to all the usual places. Only thing left to do is to add in a lipstick. For a lipstick today, I'm going to be using this NYX In Your Element lipstick. This is one of the ones that Mickey got me. This is in the shade Glossy Peach. Just looks like that. And just to add a little bit of depth and detail, I'm going to go in with this MAC uh, lip pencil first. This is in Lasting Sensation. So we're going to use that to line our lips and then we're going to fill them in with this and then we're going to kind of finish up.
So like I said, that is quite a bit darker than the lip color, but I'm kind of hoping it sort of does like an almost like ombre-ish thing. Kind of. Not quite, but kind of. So with the lipstick on, the eyes are done. We have blush, we have highlight. Last thing to do is, oh, throw my setting spray at myself. So for setting spray, I'm just using, I have just this like little lady bitty mini version of the Kat Von D Locket setting spray, which I absolutely love. This is just the only one I have right now. I wanna try and use up some of my other ones before I purchase a full size of this because there's no way I need like 10 different setting sprays. It's just not realistic. So we're just gonna set with that. Hmm. And this smells so good. It smells like cucumber. And we're going to call that done. So check it out. Does it look kind of the same colors as a bass? I don't know. You be the judge. If you guys like this video, then hit that thumbs up. Let me know if you go to cottages at time, what kind of things you like. In the end, if this becomes a thing um, and I don't have enough pictures, if you guys want to send me pictures that you're taking at your cottages, sunsets, whatever, I would love to see that and do either like a collaboration or I can just try and do it for you, like specifically inspired by a specific person, whatever you guys want, I am here to fulfill your wishes. So thanks so much for watching and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.